Good morning, traders, and welcome to the, hold on, getting there, getting there, the live trading webinar with Scott Pulsini this morning. Uh, this is the advanced education you get with Bookmap. Uh, at least that's the way we've done it uh, up to this point in the new year. We've been doing it for free in here. Uh, really nice added benefit for you guys. Uh, pretty amazing uh, to uh, get this kind of education for free. Um, uh, I encourage you to take a look around at other platforms and other, uh, even other educators out there and see if they offer something like this. Uh, very in-depth, we have uh, educational course. Uh, we have also the um, live forward-looking webinars uh, that go through that course content in the live market. And then we also have um, the, uh, uh, hold on just a moment. Okay, never mind. It was Scott reaching out. Um, and uh, good morning, Scott. Just uh, going through the intro here. Um, in, anyway, uh, the um, uh, live webinars, they go through that course content. Uh, we also have um, other streamers now. We have Tom B. Uh, he is streaming live uh, after these uh, webinars uh, and going through um, the way that he trades uh, and he looks at volume profile. So we're adding a lot of uh, uh, educational uh, content and resources in here for you guys. Uh, it, the goal here is to create really high value for you so that you can become better traders. Okay, really simple. Uh, that's the goal. Uh, we think the platform offers tremendous insight to uh, uh, what's going on in the market, uh, and uh, hopefully you find the value out of that as well, along with this education. Okay, so uh, uh, then we offer the live trading uh, by professional traders like Jay Trader and Scott Pulsini. Uh, they will go through their ways of looking at the market, and they will be taking positions. It is in demo paper trading mode and only for education. So I'll go through it in just a minute here. Uh, you guys know who Scott is. I'm going to be putting his uh, contact information into the chat here uh, for you so that uh, you can reach out to him if you're looking for educational uh, mentorship or uh, other services from Scott. Uh, let's go through the disclosures and please, um, you know, take a listen here. It's really important to understand uh, what you're getting involved with here. Uh, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. So uh, on the last two sentences here, important to note, this is demo, okay, is to learn uh, uh, how another trader looks at the markets, watch how he executes, uh, learn about his market mindset, uh, and um, uh, how he reads the order flow, his setups, uh, is not to copy uh, his, his trades. Uh, really a disservice, I think, if you uh, uh, go that direction. Um, and you'll just probably just move on to the next trader after that and the next one after that. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, stop, listen, learn, uh, and then you can apply later. Uh, the uh, executed in simulation, um, uh, yeah, one, one tick or, or one lot can make a difference. Uh, so... Uh, uh, you know, it could trigger stops or something like this, some sort of event. So in simulation, that cannot be realistic, um, realistically uh, um, um, or uh, representative of what really what happens in the market. Uh, but uh, our simulator is very good. It does put you in the queue, et cetera. So I think uh, I, I've, I know a lot of other traders really appreciate that. Uh, risk disclosure. Let's go through this. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so with that said, let's move on uh, and uh, get to Scott. Uh, and uh, turn it over to him. Go ahead, Scott. Let's see here. Um, so I don't hear you. And in fact, I do have actually one news bit to still go through uh, uh, here, Scott. Um, 
So uh, hold on just a minute. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, you may have been experiencing some issues with Rhythmic. Uh, the other day, it was only for about four hours, I believe, um, but uh, they were not disseminating the market by order data. So your uh, stops and icebergs would be flat. Uh, this was uh, nothing wrong with the bookmap platform nor the indicator. Uh, it was the data coming from Rhythmic. Just wanted to let you know about that. Uh, we do have a new feature coming out. Uh, you'll hear more about this uh, in, the, in the near future uh, so that uh, when there's times of volatility, uh, you will um, uh, go to aggregate quotes. Uh, and uh, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll talk more about it. It should help you, uh, but you would not get MBO data on that. Uh, so that's a, it's a whole separate issue. I just wanted to address the MBO the other day. That was a rhythmic centric issue. Uh, that was not a bookmap platform issue. Okay, so enough said. Uh, Scott, and uh, let's let me turn it over to him and go ahead. Okay, did we lose Scott? Hold on a minute. Get that endless mirror in here. Hi, Bruce, you hear me? Yes, there you are. I don't know what's going on with this thing today, but... Alrighty. Um, share my screen. Okay, I will start screen yeah and i'm going to share your screen as well so others uh that join if you can't join scott's streaming um of you then you can join mine uh so uh, just so you know as soon as i can figure out how to do that okay and uh yeah, yeah you look good you look good, good scott all right so <clears throat> short nasdaq here this thing's just this volatility is just crazy as you know actually the volatility is kind of tame today compared to what it's been i mean atr for five minutes like yesterday was touching 100 i mean it's almost it's almost untradeable as far as risk um right now we're at 50 ticks so anyway we had some uh you can see the sell ice right here 300 sell ice i'm actually going to sell one more right here we'll go over why i'm doing that but it's kind of a variation with this ridiculous volatility how I'm playing the edges of these zones just so I'm not risking as much you can see I just put on one here but again you know when you when you use your risk calculator which we'll go over let's go up to, let's do this up first so yeah the sell ice here um, got an aggressively three quarters in ATR because we are at the um, red Ludwig level we call them lugs been using these exclusively lately really starting to dig in to the uh, if you guys watch my past webinars last week I don't, I don't think I talked about the week before as much but um, yeah I did the last two weeks I'm using these you know not just as support as resistant and resistance but when you draw new ones what should happen what shouldn't happen and we'll get into that but um, this is I take a trade aggressively at the red or blue lug the fading um, because they're, again there's such strong um, support and resistance levels so you know i'm willing to take that aggressively if i get stopped out we'll probably draw new lugs and then i'll look to go long but i'm willing to do that here because we had a volume event at the red lug um so again i just put on one down here because i had to risk literally i got in at 3250 and i had to risk um so that was three quarters of an atr then i had to risk three quarters of an atr above this zone so that's almost literally like it's like 90 something points right so if you look at this uh, risk calculator, <clears throat> you know, 90 points, I could put on one, <laughs> right? And I know, you know, 90 points seems like a lot, but in these markets, this market can move, you know, two, 300 points in a, in a heartbeat, and that's what it's been doing lately. So I'm fine with the trade. What I did here is I added, so we've been doing this a little a little more often in um, in the room. We took, well, not talked about it the last couple of days because the volatility is so ridiculous so what you can do you know if you don't want to be risking the 90 points 
you know, you get this zone and it comes back to the top of it. I only do this at Ludwig, at Ludwig levels, but you can enter it and, and you can stop, stop by anyway, NQ, so 156 contracts. Let's see if the stop room stops me out. Um, but I will add at the at the edges of zones if they're on top of a Ludwig level or log, I'm going to say logs from now on. And I get sick of saying Ludwig level. That's why we name them logs. Um, so that's what I did here. Again, you can see we're still at this log. It's trying to clear it. If it clears it, I'll get stopped out. But then we'll build new lugs, most likely kind of like we did here. Right, we we're coming down. It broke the lug. We built new lugs. It couldn't couldn't hold this. They called the yellow is called directional. Couldn't hold directional or the prior blue, and then that was a good short trade, right? So it's the same thing here. If we build new lugs, then I'll be looking to, I'll be stopped out, but then I'll be looking for a long. So we'll see if this can hold. So I posted the last couple of weeks, the, the meeting I had with uh, Pamela Ludwig, where we went over the dynamics of the Ludwig levels and how she uses them and what, how she uses them as far as what you should see, what you shouldn't see. So it'll be telling, one of the, one of the main first things we talked about in that webinar is, you know, if we, if you, get above a lug and it doesn't build new lugs and you get back below us just telling you the the factors to build the new lugs are did not they didn't occur so when you get back below that's that's just as good as a short as the first touch so so that's what i'm hoping for but again if i get stopped out then i get stopped out and look for the new trade so we'll see what happens here um all right so that's that let's see if this can hold There's been really nothing in ES. There was some stop runs early. <clears throat> Pull over my little tick strike. He came up. He came up with this new thing where they kind of lock together. That's helpful. We don't have to be dragging one by one, but we'll be watching this. Um, let me just pull it here so I can be tortured and watch myself get stopped out here. One second. Um, let's just go through these logs real quick just to see where we're at thesis wise right so we're close to the red lug here in ES if I get a short signal I will take it aggressively if we bust through here and build new lugs I'll be looking for longs we'll go over that if that occurs and that will occur if this NASDAQ keeps ripping up um, Russell so this is one of the other things we talked about so when, when you, you, know, you get below the directional yellow lug, your expectation is the, the blue or the red lug, right? And if it doesn't tag it, that's telling you something's up, right? So what, the way we're using this is you come up with this thesis, I don't just jump in here, but when I get my volume signal, then that's telling me, you know, if you get a bullish volume signal, that's telling me something's wrong, and then I'm glad, I'm glad to, sh to go along now, right? Because we didn't once we cleared this yellow lug. Now the expectation is to get to the red lug, right? And you guys would be, I mean, if you haven't seen these things in action, they're, they are unbelievable as far as markets going right to lug. So, for instance, I took this trade last night um, before I went to bed. I just put on a tiny trade on my other account because, you know, I can't watch the volume. The volume is most important. The SA indicator, as I talk about every time, <clears throat> is the most important factor. So when I put on trades like this, it's like, I you know, I'm just hoping it can get to here. So I literally put this on. I'll show you this screenshot over there. was a dumb and dumber down here and we moved away. We retested. I got long and I, actually this was a little higher, but um, you know, blue log, I, I shouldn't even look for a retest, but it was at night. So I waited, it, we moved up, came back and retested. You'll see, I'll show you this here in a second in the book, man. I got long, I put my stop and uh, three quarters in ATR below the zone, went to bed and I put my offer up here and right to the lock got filled and I actually build new lugs. So this is what I'm talking about. Once you build new lugs, and this might happen in NASDAQ here, what should happen is it should hold directional yellow and prior red. So you, a lot of times you'll see it bounce around, but your expectation is it'll hold and go to the next lug. If that doesn't happen, that's telling you something up, something is up, and then you're looking for a move back down to the blue lug. And again, you're, you're, you're waiting for your volume signals to confirm these, these trades. So that's the most important part. Um, Sure, I'll show you the, quickly the setup last night. <clears throat> I think I screenshot it. Yes, 
sure. Yes, I didn't. I thought I did. Hmm. Uh, okay. Well, there there was a dumb and dumber right down here, and that's why I got along. But the guy just was wanted to show you. I mean, again, I put that on. I was risking. You know, at the time, I think it was like thirteen points. The expectation of this move, right? And this was almost a, this was a hundred point move. <laughs> Risking thirteen to make a hundred, you will become a million dollar trader very, very quickly if you catch those types of trades. All right, let's see if this little piglet could uh, get back below this zone. So this was a hundred fifty six stop run. My my usual size in here is for my thresholds is one fifty for stops, one fifty for ice. So technically, I could draw a new zone here, uh, but lately I just been it's been more like closer to 200. So I'm not going to draw this. What am I doing here? But this was a stop run up here. You can see the snake, uh, snakes sweeps. Bruce doesn't like when I call them snakes. The sweep indicator. That was this. That was that. Um, so it did hold that. So this is actually looking like it's turning into a dumb and dumber if you want to draw this zone. But it's not, I, don't, I wouldn't add to this trade anyway right now. Since I have two on, so we'll just see if this can hold and move low, or if not, that'll stop me out, but we'll build new lugs, and I'll look to flip and go long. Um, and then, yes, there was really nothing recently. This morning at the open, we got a couple stop runs, and I was going to short it, and then it blew right through here. Let's see if I can find this here. You can see I had my, my I was ready to short this market. So you had this first stop run here. See them down here. This was like seven something, seven thirty-seven. That's the yellow zone here. And then right after that, we have a five hundred twenty-nine stop stop run. So my threshold in ES is um, for stops is five hundred, right? So you had this event, and then you had this event. And I was watching this, and we came off of here, and then I was waiting for a retest of the most recent setup, which was this white zone, and then I was going to short a retest failure, and it never failed. It just went right through, so I didn't do anything. Uh, and then that's basically uh, all that's happened in here, volume-wise. And you can see once we ripped above here. So I, I wasn't willing to take a long off of the zone, even though it came back exactly to the zone. That's how powerful these areas are. Uh, because we went we went a full ATR below this zone initially, so I don't use that as that's not that doesn't qualify as a long setup now. If you get an ATR below it, it was only worth a bearish um, trade for me. So now I'm just waiting for something new. You know, short here. So Nasdaq's holding. Can't believe I didn't get stopped out to the tick like I did here. I'll show you this crew trade earlier, right there. You guys ever seen this before? I mean, look at this. So I literally was in a great mood. I wake up, I made 100 points in the ES. I, I put on, a, I will go over this crew trade in a little bit. And then I added, everything was going good. And then I literally get filled on my ad to the exact tick. And then this happened. And then I started to lose my mind again, like I always do, saying, how, how does that happen 10 times a day to me? So it started out as a really good morning, but it's, at least I didn't get stopped out to the tick on this yet anyway. All right. Um, so again, I'm waiting. <clears throat> so this will be telling in ES, right? We we know we tagged the the um, NQ red lugs, right? So hopefully this can get back below here, and that's a great great sign for the short. If we got above here and we didn't draw new lugs, and we get back below, these are going to be my targets. Uh, ES. So remember what we just I just showed you in um, I think it was Russell where we came up or we came down in Russell and we didn't tag the blues, same for the red. You see how we couldn't tag this? That is that is a, a short, shortish sign, right? I'm not gonna just jump in because we didn't tag it because the expectation is we'll still tag it. But the point is if I get a bearish setup now in the volume, I will be loving to short this thing. I'll still wait for retest failure because we're above the yellow direction along, I mean uh, line and I only go long aggressively above here, I go short aggressively below here. So I'll still wait for, again, if we get a new setup here, I'll wait for a full ATR retest failure to go short. But this is telling you something. We couldn't tag it. We couldn't tag it. If you get a bearish signal, that's giving you confidence we're going to go here and then probably here. And you guys have seen these on these webinars. I literally, this, thing's, this is like, you know, 80 points away. 
trust me, it will it can go there and probably will just like this trade here. So keep an eye on that. <coughs> um, over the uh, crude trade here. So earlier. See here, we came up here, we tagged the volume setup. I went long, got another one here. I went long, filled in the tick, and then I got stopped out. So I was able to trail my stop. I'll show you this here in a second. But that's what's great about the SI stuff, obviously, is when, you know, obviously to enter the trade, but then I got a new signal. So my original stop was, a, um, the area was here, was a uh, three quarters of an ATR below this, this volume signal, right? But then I got a new one, and I was able to trail my stop three quarters an ATR below there, which was right about there. And then I added to it. So if this if this was able to hold, I would have had two positions on for for a shot at the red luck, right? It came back, stopped me out. I, had, I took a small loss, but you know I took a small loss for a potential huge winner, right? And that's what trading is, right? And that just didn't happen. But this is telling too for crude, right? This should have tagged. You should not have seen a bearish setup up here. This should have tagged this. It didn't tag it. You get a bearish setup. Now we're about to clear below this this yellow directional line. I will be taking aggressive shorts because, you know, one, we're below the yellow line. I'll, I'll always take aggressive shorts regardless. But even knowing what happened up here, that is giving you, um, giving you an idea of what's going to happen thesis wise right it should have tagged didn't got a bear set up and now we're below so here nice for sells yes 200 contract if i get if i get a short signal i will trade this and then this is my expectation down here so keep an eye on that but i'm definitely now flipping my thesis to short and crude let's see what's going on here torture treatment Still alive. Still alive. All right, so again, I was willing in this zone. This is a little variation with this volatility. You guys haven't seen me do this very often or ever in here. I always wait for either three quarters or a full ATR retest failure, then get in at three quarters. I was willing to give this a shot up here It's because I was only having a risk about you know, 40, which is only 40 points, but in this market, 40 points is nothing. I was willing to put that on at the edge of the zone with my stop right there versus this trade where I'm risking 100 points, right? So because that was the red lug, I won't just do this in any setup, but if we're near a major lug, I'll do it. And that's why I did that. So let's see if this works. I, I, I'm still in shock. I didn't get stopped out to the tick here. So whoever's on this webinar, your house might get struck by lightning because something did happen. There. <clears throat> um, that was a joke, by the way. Any questions, Bruce? Uh, just a minute. Yes. Uh, so uh, David is asking questions. Um, uh, may I ask? Well, I, I'll just read it out to you. Uh, may I ask, when in profit, for example, in on NQ, uh, why don't you move the stops to break even? This is your thesis, right? Going. Um, uh, short, uh, could you not just re-enter with the same stop at 14, 420 uh, and short from, from the ticks higher? All right, I'm going to have to read that myself. That was very long. Hold yeah, on and there's, a, it, there's still more follow-up to it as well. So th this is exactly what we I just said. I want to be short crude. Here's your stop run. Now I will go short this market. Here you see the stop run, 324. I will short this three quarters in ATR aggressively because we're below the yellow lug. Plus, I know what happened earlier when I was long. It should have went, it should have went to the red lug and it didn't end. So 21.4 times 0.75, so we're doing three quarters in ATR is 16 ticks. 16.05, actually, I didn't want to do that. All right. So the bottom of this zone, I'm already missing this trade probably, is 35, so 19. There we go. So I'm going short aggressively three quarters in ATR. So you guys have seen me trade these aggressively or conservatively. Conservative is way for if that by the way, if this is a low tick, I'm gonna I'm gonna break something, so just be ready for that. Um if this 
the conservatives wait for a full ATR, so that would be 21, what did I say, 21.4 or something. Uh, 20, now it's 22.5. Wait for a full ATR, wait for a retest, get in three quarters of an ATR, risk three quarters of an ATR below there. That's the conservative. I got aggressive because of what we just talked about. Three quarters of an ATR, I'm in. And again, if this is a slow tick, I'm going to lose it. It was not, uh, by one tick it was. <laughs> It drives me nuts, man. Let's get this over here, too. All right, so. Stock CL, 215 contract. All right, that's good. No more complaining. Now what I can do, I can add and trail my stop on the new setup, right? So you, you saw the thesis of what should happen up there, so I was already ready to go short here when I, when I got my volume event. Here's my volume event. Here's another 215 stops. So the minimum I can do is trail my stop so again, 22.5 times 0.75 because it went up a little bit. So it's 17 ticks. So I can now trail my stop 17 ticks above here. We'll say, third, we'll say 37. Right. What I can do as well is add to this 17 ticks below because I want to still be aggressive, right? Mm -hmm. So that's at 90. I will add to this trade. Stop will go in the same spot. Second year. Right. So we got that on. The issue with this is, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move this. So, you know, the, the normal process is to stop out three cores in ATR above the latest setup, right? Um, NASDAQ's working out nicely, by the way. And I cannot believe I didn't get stopped off to the tick out there. So quickly before we go to crew, let's just see where our lugs are here. Yep. Yo, lugs not done. We got another 80 points to go, 90 points to go. So that's good. Wait, watch that. Um, so what I was saying is the normal, you, you got to use a little judgment, right? So here's the, the most recent volume uh, event, right? The normal, if there was nothing that happened above here, I would get out three quarters above here. But do I want to stop out right in the middle of this zone? No. So I'm willing to risk an extra, you know, 10, 12 ticks and just go right above that zone. So I don't see one of these, which happens all the time, right? Especially in crude. It'll test this zone, then it'll go. I don't want to stop out in the middle of the zone. So this is the same about, and I haven't even read this question yet, but I'm already about to start my rant about moving the stop to break even. The break even is not is not an area where these setups are rejected or not or, you know wrong, right? We'll go over that here in a second. So I'm not I don't move anything to break even, and that's that's the retail's traders. I got filled on this ad. That's the retail trader's biggest fallacy or biggest mistake that that you can make trading. That market doesn't care that you don't want to give back your profit. The market doesn't care that you, you know. You, you don't want to lose your or, or lose you want to lose less right put your stops in areas that the market cares about volume events but you know if you don't want to risk all the way up to here then just put a little bit of, i'm fine 155 contracts i'm fine with variations of these zones but we talk about this all the time this is the science there's no disputing there was a stop run here there's a stop run here how you play these zones you can come up with variations i've been watching this for two years and thousands of setups this is the best way that i've come up with to trade these but if you say you know what i'll add to this but my stop's going to go right here for everything fine i'm okay with that because you're above this zone but if you say i'll get in here but i, I don't want to risk more than 15 ticks so i'm going to stop out right there well what what is that this is nothing the market doesn't care about this the market cares about this area right so don't don't be that trader that trails your stops based on your P&L because you're not going to make it as a trader. Use areas. So I'm willing to risk all the way back up here for this trade. If you don't want to do that, then risk right there. But I'm telling you, don't put your stops in the middle of zones, in front of zones, because you're going to get stopped out most of the time, right? I had, I had a struggling trader in my room, and he's like, he put a thing in the cancels membership, and I'm like, I sent him a message. I'm like, I saw you're canceling the membership because he said, um, you're, I don't like I don't like your style of, of trading or the way you're trading or something. And, I, and I, I messaged him and I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, you your risks are too big 
or NASDAQ, I like to risk 10 points, trying to make 20 and risk 10. I'm like, I go, well, then you're not going to make it. Simple, simple as that. Because risking 10 points in the NASDAQ, that's just randomness. You're just randomly risking 10 points. You're going to lose. You've got to risk you know, above certain areas. This turned out to be a good trade. Hold on a second. I'm already ranting. I don't know why I'm going to ban it. So if this comes down here at, uh, so this is close enough to the yellow lug, I'll get out of one of these. Why? Because we have VWAP. You know, everyone knows VWAP is, you know, some, it, it's a, it's a indicator that most people use and it's confluent, right? Confluence means it's, it's, you know, you have multiple things in an area. So if this comes down to VWAP and starts to struggle, I'll get out of one. I, I don't need to wait for the yellow lug. It's close enough, right? Um, but I'll still hold on to one and try for that. Or if I see an opposing setup, then I'll get out. Right. So what is that VWAP, by the way? Let's see. And you can see I'm hammering these stocks on tick strike too, by the way. Let's see. So this is right around 79. So we'll see how it reacts down there if it gets down there. Stock CL, 100. Stock CL, 150 contracts. Guys, CL. 150 contracts. All right, so I got two positions on here. What can I do? Now I can trail my stop, right? Quickly, top of the zone 65. ATR is 27 now. So 27 times 175 is 20 ticks. So I'm going to go 20 ticks above this zone to stop out. Risking missing this, drawing these zones. But, so this is 64. 65, 85, I'll be out of this trade if it comes back up there, right? This is the beauty. So I'm not trailing my stop because I don't want to give back my profit. I'm trailing my stop because of a reason, a volume event, right? If I'm in on these trades, I don't ignore when they, when they happen and they turn the other way, right? I'm out of the trade. So this is exactly what happened on the long earlier. I was playing for a huge move. I got a volume event, it came back, and I stopped out, and that's fine. Trust me, you play enough of these, you're going to catch the big move, kind of like we're doing here in NASDAQ, right? Hopefully you can get down here and not pull a NASDAQ and rip all the way back on me. But, um, let me, one second. Guys, I got multiple multiple accounts going here, so um, what am I doing now? Oh, we want to check where the where's the red lug on crude. See how close we are, the blue lug, I mean. So I'm gonna I'm real close to peeling out of all of these. Okay, 46. We're within 10 ticks. We have a volume event here. So I'm gonna what what I'm gonna do now. Probably gonna get out of three right here. GC stocks GC 250 contracts. All right, so I'm out of three there, and the reason is I know we're still in this zone, but we have a volume event and it's real close. Real close to uh, it's really close to um the blue lug, right? So I'm not gonna mess with it. And what I'm gonna do here is if this pops above here, we'll just say. We'll move it to a half ATR. So, because we're so actually, what I should do down here is flip and go long if this turns into a bullish setup. Right? Uh, I'll just leave this where this is, but that's what I'll do. I will go long. Everything is just firing off at one time here, guys. So, give me, let me know where the NASDAQ is. I don't want to miss this. stuff so frozen all right so we didn't we didn't get down to that vwap so we'll hold on to that so what i was saying is why i'll flip this and go long is the same reason i went short in nasdaq right at, let's do because we're at this red lug right our blue lug we're real close this is close enough. I don't need to try to squeeze out another. Which I'm just going to get out of this for right now. I don't need to squeeze out another. Uh, 
20 ticks. So now what I'll do is I will go along this setup because we have a volume event right at the blue lug, real close, right? So I will go along aggressively out of here. We said it's 20 ticks is the ATR. As my trading platform is frozen on my other computer. So first, read off that question while I'm trying to reset this thing, please. Um, David, right. I think he answered your question uh, about the uh, uh, the stops, and, and you kind of answered Buffer it yourself a, a little right bit there about uh, understand the need for the buffer regarding the ATRs. Uh, let, let us know, uh, and uh, we can... Uh, I'll, I'll look at it, too, when things settle down here. Yeah, yeah, um, I mean, things are kind of hot and heavy, too, so uh, uh, we'll try to, try to get to the questions. Um, uh, Let's see, uh, Forex Net Worth is also asking about um, uh, your bearish, do you have the same bearish thesis for ES? Now, this is a, a while ago. I mean, like 10 minutes ago is kind of a while ago now, um, but due to the red lugs uh, on the ES, that's why. Yeah. <sighs> So no issues with Bookmap though, right? I mean, everything is working correctly in Bookmap for you. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Bookmap. This is, gosh, how annoying. Okay. Hold on a second. I gotta go to my other trading platform to try to cover my short that I couldn't get out of because my platform just froze up, and now I can't. Re now it won't Do you, you populate. Do you do you need to call the broker or anything like that if you want to take a, a break? Oh, it's fine. I just it just cost me fifty ticks, but hold on a second. Oof. Joke. Ah, it's upsetting. So now I'm long. This you saw why I got out down here, like right above this zone, because we're at the blue lug. Now I'm, now I turn around and flip this trade. Right, and now my stop's gonna go three. Beauty. Um, Three quarters of an ATR below here, so 20, um, 33. That was it. Beauty, Scott. 20, 20 tips. What'd you say? Beauty. I mean, that's a, uh, I love it. Uh, you know, it, it just, it, it, during, during the webinars, like, uh, you know, it just seems like, I always feel like, uh, you know, it's kind of like, oh, I, I'm flip flopping. Um, uh, right at this, we're real close to this VWAP here. I'm just gonna get out of one right here. I know we're close enough, and then I'll wait for them to see what happens at the blue lug. VWAP is like at 78. Trust me, this, I mean, 13, 15 points in this market is like a blink of an eye. So yeah. I'll just get out of that. Got my windows back, yeah, that's nice. It's nice to be able to trade. So anyway, as Scott is kind of uh, doing some trade man management, just a just a note. I, I just love it. Like uh, you know, he, Scott is trading his plan. I mean, very very cleanly and clearly here. Like uh, an or another order flow event at a level. Uh, he's reversing. It's not a flip flop. Uh, it's just a, a super um, a fast uh, execution. Right. Again, I I was hoping this thing went to zero. Right. Fine with me. I got a volume event. Do I ignore a bullish volume event? This is a dumb and dumber. This is a stop run, one of my five setups. You can get the course on my website and book map marketplace. You have the dumb and dumber here. Stop run. You can see these these sweeps. I call this white snake. Here's the white snake. As soon as I got out of here, I usually will wait. This is where I would normally get out on this setup, three quarters in ATR, but I knew we were at the blue lug, so I I was I wanted out, right? And now I'm long. Stop goes below here. Here we'll come back to there. Let's see what's going on with uh, MQ. We'll go back over a little bit once it settles down. What, what I was looking at here. All right, so blue lug here. So one crude. What just happened? Same thing we talked about up here, right? The expectation is once you clear the yellow, 
hold the yellow, you, sh CL. you should get to the red. 150 contracts. Hold on. Now I have another volume of it. Now I can trail my stop or add to the trade like I did on the short. It's 133. I, I usually wait for 150. You see how we touch this prior zone, right? I'm not trading off the prior zone, but right there. You guys, these volume areas are it. Like this is what this is what these markets trade off of. All right, so let's just draw this in. Like I'm gonna trail my stop on this now. So it started coming in right here. Up to there. Make that different color because it's confusing. Of course I colored the wrong line. All right, so so that's the newest volume event, right? So now I'm going to trail my stock 20 ticks below this volume event. Let's just make sure the ATR is still the same. Of course, I lost my chart. Uh, the three quarters of an ATR is based on the five minute chart or the 15 minute chart? Five minute. Five minute chart. There you go, right. David. Uh, so as well as, right there, as well 28. as Fabio. 8. So 28.8 .8 times, we'll say 29 times 0 0.75, 21.75, so 22 ticks. So I will stop out 22 ticks below here, but I may have to go a little bit below that zone like I did in, um, when I put on the short earlier. So 88, so 66. Yeah, see, that would be stopping out. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm willing to risk to below just below this zone because I'll be stopping out, which happens all the time. You guys are watching it right now. I touch that prior volume area, come back. It's can, and crude is in the number one market to retest areas, like probably like it's going to do here. So I'm not going to stop out at 66 right above this zone. I'm going to I'll risk another 15 ticks and go immediately below this zone because this zone should hold. And if it doesn't, I'm willing to risk 15 ticks so I don't get stopped out. Minimum, I can I'm moving my stop up 20 ticks, right? And then if I get another volume event as this rolls higher, then I will, we got a lot of zones on here. Hold on, let's get rid of these just because we've gone well through an ATR below here. I just, did I just delete that? Yeah, oops, hold on a second. Two two things here. One, I already trailed my stop based on this new event, right? And QI by NQ, 151 contracts. Hold on. All right, that was a good cover down here. You see we bounced basically right off VWAP. Now you have a look at this buy ice coming in. Now I can trail my stop for this last one based on this new setup coming in. Ice is still coming in. 152. Again, I, I, lately I've been going 200, but I have a position on. I know we bounced off VWAP, and I know we were close to, what was it, the yellow lug, so I, I will draw this. So it's still coming in anyway, so this is more. This is just continuous, so this is definitely more than 150. Uh, I may have to expand this zone, but let's make this blue for buy ice. So now what do I do? I can trail my stop on this one lot. ATR is 52 points. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's nothing the last few days. So it's 52 times 0.75 is 39. So 40 points I'll go because it was a little more than that. And this is a little higher end as well. So 40 points above here. Actually, we did get above there more. Let's see. Sorry. You want to incorporate all the prices that happen in the ice, right? You can see where this event occurred and then dissipated. Make sure you get all the prices. So the top of this zone is 53 quarters. So 93, 90, 53.75, 93.75, I'll stop out of this trade on this remaining one lot. And it'll still be a nice trade, right? Even if this steps me out, if I could find 93.75. So again, I hope this goes to zero. 
if but if this turns into a bullish event, I'm not holding. I'm getting out, but I'm not getting out because I don't want to give back my my PL. I'm getting out for a reason. A volume event, three quarters in ATR above the volume event. That's it. And then I'm on my next trade. I don't sit here and hope or, you know, again, as this was coming down, how many times were guys trailing their stop and got stopped out? Because they don't want to lose more than 10 points. I mean, that's ridiculous. If you really think about how ridiculous that is, you'll stop doing it, right? I do like as, as well, White Snake. My stop's above that as well. So, um, <clears throat> so now what will I do with this zone as far as flipping? Well, because we're below, I think we're below, hold on. I can't remember what these lows look like. We're actually above. So what I will do here is I will go along uh, at that same spot because we are above the yellow look. So that, you see why I got out there? I don't need to try to squeeze out another 14 point, 15 points when I there's something else there like VWAP, right? So that's why I got out of one. Now we get a bullish event. We couldn't even tag the yellow. If you shouldn't see, well, you should see bullish events if we're still above the yellow. So I take that back. So if I, now we have the buy ice, if we get it at three quarters in ATR, I will go long and this is my expectation again. And then hopefully rip through here and build new lugs. So I am going to stop out of that trade and and then go long up here. And I'm pretty sure all I can put on as one again. Get this in the same price. There we go. All right. Things are starting to settle down so I can get to some of these questions. But that's, again, this may turn into a bullish event. We're above the yellow lug. I'm willing to go in aggressively. If we were below the yellow lug, I'll still go along this event. But I need to see a full ATR, a retest, then a failure, then three quarters. Aggressive is just three quarters. See the difference? So that's what I'm willing to do. If not, if this doesn't hold, what I will do here is I can add to this trade on, on the short side now. If we go, actually, this is the retest, is it not? This is, is this a full ATR below the zone? Oh, no, this came in later. So now I will go short. I will add to the short, but I need to see full ATR retest failure. Why? Because we're still above the yellow lug. So I'm not going to be aggressive out of this, out of the, above the yellow lug. You guys may be saying, well, why would you be aggressive up at the top? Well, I was aggressive at the top because of the red lug. Right. But if we get in between these, then I'm then I'm being conservative on my shorts because we're still above the yellow reds, blues. I will be aggressive because I know how powerful they are with the volume setup. But if we're in between, then I need to see full ATR retest. So hopefully that makes sense. So again, ATR is 50, we're up to 56 points. So I need to see 56 points below below this. So down to 69, basically. Right. 69. So I need to see this come all the way down to 69, and then a retest, and then a failure, then I'll get in three quarters and ATR short. I'll add to the short. If that doesn't happen, then I'll get stopped out, and then I'll look to, well, I should go in long aggressively because we're above the yellow load. So hopefully you guys are following along. If, yeah, you, you, not, you, you, you would exit and then enter long on that, uh, just, just to uh, so everyone right. knows. Yeah. And that's an aggressive entry. I'm, I'm getting aggressive because we're still above the yellow lug, directional lug, right? So I'm taking all longs aggressively out of here. And, and you had the volume event, so I, I will get in aggressively off of this setup. Otherwise, again, if this was below the yellow lug, I would wait for, if I wanted to go long, I needed to see a full ATR or retest a failure, then I go long. But above the yellow lug, I go long aggressively. Okay. Yeah. Uh, someone's also uh, uh, said that there's a, a 200 stop uh, in gold, um, full ATR coming back for a retest. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to, uh, things are kind of hot and heavy here. So I uh, just wanted to mention it to you. And uh, you're ca you're rather caught up on the uh, on the questions here. Okay. I like your uh, hot and heavy. You talking about trading <laughs> or something else? <laughs> well, wow, there's volatility. <laughs> It's definitely not heavy. It's very light. These markets are swiping. I mean, it's like ES ATR yesterday was like 22 points. It's like that's what the normal NASDAQ ATR is, 22 points. In it. Like I was risking 40 points to put on a trade. I mean, you can 
you can't you got to adjust your size yeah we'll get into that yeah maybe in that rant a little bit um all right so i'm still on this i was going to say something else oh whoever just said there was a gold stop i i should pay you to come in my room because this is exactly what i'm trying to tell the guys <laughs> in their, my room to do because everyone's secret squirrel quiet and it's like the whole point of that room is to point out setups and new lugs and everything like that i mean there's a couple guys that do it but that's what you know what you want to do with these if you're in, even in the book map room right hey there's a 200 last stop run here let's mark this up right now you guys need to collaborate and you're you know you can work as a team and so no one misses any setups right it doesn't do anybody any good including yourself to be quiet and afraid to ask questions and not point out stuff you know if you're wrong you're wrong you know if something's wrong someone will point it out no one's gonna you know you're not gonna get beat up if you say something that's wrong but participate and that's how you're gonna learn so whoever said that, thank you. Again, I should pay you to come to my room because that's I can't get the guys in there to consistently do that. All right, so this is the zone. <clears throat> I yell, I give them verbal lashings every day about that, by the way. I'm sure a lot of them are on here right now laughing. All right, so this is the setup. So this is what I do. I hear a setup, then I go to my lugs and I say, okay, what, what what's the thesis? What does it look like? What, what should have happened? What didn't happen? All right, this is, I don't know what it is even. This looks really weird. It's a lot of lugs drawn here, but it is what it is. So, you don't usually see this many lugs back to back, but um, <clears throat> we drew new lugs. What do we do? We held the prior blue and the yellow, right? Expectation is the blue. Here's your volume event. If it breaks below that stop run, I'm going to go short aggressively three quarters in atr because we're below the yellow expectation is the blue if this turns into a bullish setup you shouldn't see that that means we failed to tag the blue i will go long on a full atr retest all right so hopefully it's starting to click so now check your atr 27.6 so just say 28 points 28 times 0.75 is 21 points 21 ticks sorry not points so what i will do here 21 ticks below this zone I will go short aggressively, right? 82, 61. That's my short. Expectations blue lug. The only problem is how close we if we're too close to the lug, I won't put trades on because it's not worth the risk. It's 42. Um I'll still put it on, but I'll watch if we swipe down this lug, I'll be getting on it at least two or three. So that's my short, and I will go long conservatively because we're below the yellow lug right here's the yellow lug i need to see full atr so 27 ticks retest failure and then i'll get in at 22 ticks three quarters in atr 21 ticks and i'll go long but i need to see this to go long because we're below the yellow lug i just need to see this to go short because we're below the yellow lug right that's it that's my trick all right so that's that uh So what was I can't even remember the setup now. This was it here. Yeah. So I'm not gonna add aggressively out of this zone. Let's see where we're at. I wouldn't anyway, I think, because we're below the yellow look. Yeah. So I need to see I, I will add to this if we can get a full ATR buff here, retest. We just haven't done it yet, right? I'm just sitting here. 8708. ATR is 26.5 so i need to see 27 ticks out of here retest fail to go long because we're below the yellow look so i need to see this touch this is 09 i need to see this touch 36. retest fail i'll get in at three quarters in atr and then my stop goes three quarters in atr where i'm already at for this first long right so the stop is already actually i went a little lower because I got below the zone, right? When I, I delete that, where's my order? Hmm, interesting. I don't know how I deleted that, but that's fine. So that's where my stop will go if I get, if, if we get the full ATR retest fail. So that's gonna take some a little bit of time, so we'll wait on that. Um, there's NASDAQ. Just tying into the zone. Again, I, I will flip this long aggressively because we're still above the yellow look and we never even touched it. 
The non-tags aren't as important as the non-tags of these, but we couldn't get down here. Volume event, I'll go along. I'm going to go back to the red lug. So you see how, I'm, I, you know, markets change quickly. So I, I'll flip based on what didn't happen or, or my thesis, and then when I get the volume that way, I'm, I'm, it's ready to go. So what, what did you, this is how quickly this stuff flips, right? So we built new lugs. What did we do? Try to swipe down quickly, got back above red, got back above yellow, anything above here, you should expect to move to the red. It's exactly what happened. Then we got the volume signal at the red. Remember how I said, if it gets NQ above- stop, stop by NQ, 197 contracts. So I'm long that, obviously. It got above here, it couldn't hold. Got, we had our volume event, I got short aggressively, expectation yellow lug. That didn't happen, I got out of one at VWAP, I just got stopped out here uh, on my other one, but now I'm long based on this didn't happen, volume event, the expectations red lugs. So you see, I'm like, if I was, I would have been long, I would have been short, now I'm back long. And it's all confirmed with your volume, the most important piece, the book map volume. I didn't get stopped out yet. It's coming. So this is a new event too. So what I should do here, I'll stop out, but I'm not gonna go long yet. Actually, I'll go long because I can control my risk. I'll flip, I'll flip and go long one. <clears throat> so here's the new event, right? 200 lot stop run, 192. This is what's great about these sweeps as well. You can really figure out where they started. Where the where the stop run started right there. Get all your prices in there. You see where the this is black mamba. I know how Bruce loves when I call them snakes. I won't call them snakes. I'll call it black mamba and white snake. This is this is black mamba. We call it in the room. This is a stop run. We'll make it yellow or orange, whatever color that is. All right, so that's the new volume event. I filled. I am now long, right there. So now my stop's going to go three quarters in ATR below the newest volume event. Right, that's at 55. ATR is 56.2. 56.2 times 0.75 is 42 points. So my stop will go for this one guy. And that's all I can trade because I'm risking 100 points on a trade, right? 42 points below here. That puts me at, uh, can't add right now, it's 16, 14, right? Yes. So my stop on this guy goes right here. A ton of risk. It is what it is. This is the volatility. I'm adjusting the volatility. That's all I'm doing, right? So now here's an example. Will I go long? So you saw I went long at the, at the remember I, I went short up here at the top of the zone? Seems like two days ago, by the way. Let's see. Where we at? Remember I went short up here at the top of the zone? Well, I did that because there was a major lug there, right? This is not a major lug. This is in between lugs, the yellow and the red. So I'm not, so say this pulls back, right? Say this pulls back to the bottom of this zone. I will not go long. You could, again, you can come up through. This is the science. This is the art. CL, 230 How you want to play these zones. So that's taken off. We already have a stop in here. So now what I can do here. yes. 758 contracts. Got a little stuttering going on with the. So now the worst thing I can do is trail my stop, right? New event. I'm not trailing my stop because I don't want to lose my profit back. I'm trailing my stop because there's a new event. That's why you trail your stops, not because you don't want to get back money. Because if you do do it for that reason, you will get back money. You do it enough, you think you're doing the right thing, you're not doing the right thing. Trust me, you want to base it off something. It could be lugs, it could be volume setups. It can't be because I don't want to give back my money. 27 point, 26.8. Uh, some guy in the room 
said there was a way to do this ATR and uh, the three quarter ATR and thicker swim. I just haven't had a chance to do it. So 20, 20 ticks below here is three quarters and eight, eight, three quarters and ATR, and that's why I will stop out. So 37, 17. That's where my stop will go because you should not see a bearish volume event based on what is happening here. Actually, I take that back. We're still, we're still below here. So say this turns into a bearish event. And here's a VWAP, by the way, but I'll just hold it. I'm, I'm at least playing for directional. But if we get into a bearish event, if this fails, I'll, I'll stop out of my long and I'll go short aggressively because why? We're below the yellow log, right? So this will be an ad, or I'll flip and go short there. If not, my expectation now is so what, what I will do here, because I just, I want to be consistent. Here's VWAP. If this can't pop above here right now, I'm going to get out of one of these. We just saw NASDAQ, how that basically saved me 100 points, right? Just watch this for a second. NASDAQ's rolling. All right, I'm just going to get out of one because I'm sick of watching. So this will be five. No. So I still have two on. Let's just do it this way. Five. So I'll get out of these two lot and I'll flip this short if this comes back here. Right? Other than that, my expectation now is a minimum directional yellow, 8771. And then maybe this will get rolling and get up to the red lug. And if you think that it happens all the time, you're like, well, that's way too far away. You watch. Trust me, if we get above this and you start getting volume events, we're coming up there. <clears throat> and it'll be glorious. Gas will be ten dollars a gallon, but all right. So now we flip along here. Uh, let's just make sure. We're at. All right. So now we're close to the red lug, sixty-five. If we come up there, I'll be out, and then I'll wait for it to see if it holds. So I get I'll get out at lugs without any volume event, right? Like if this pops up here, I'm out. And then, I, you know, I can always get back in because if we draw new lugs, yellow will be like right here, blue will be up here, red will be here. It should hold prior red, new yellow, and then I'll get another, it's almost certain I will get another volume event, then I'll turn around and get long again. I don't want to watch this. We just saw what happened here. I don't want to watch this come all the way back. If there's no volume event, I just want to get out, right? So that, what did I say that was? And that's right at the bottom of the zone too. So actually, if we touch this zone and start to roll out, I'll just get out. I mean, the red lug is like right up here. 65-ish. All right, a lot going on. Never filled on uh, gold yet. Again, I'll get short aggressively. I'll get long full ATR retest fail. Gold has not been, it's been really weird lately, not, not really trading, trading like little spurts and then it'll do nothing. So I'm not expecting anything to happen there for a while. Uh, all right, any other questions, Bruce? Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, in fact, I was just I'm just writing in here uh, to, to everybody. Uh, uh, I'm trying to take stabs at uh, answering your questions here. So uh, because you're just so actively um, uh, trading and managing your positions. And this is just really, really good stuff. This is what we need to see. Uh, execution, how, how an expert executes uh, very, very quickly and effectively uh, and their their kind of mindset here. Uh, so, so guys, don't. I'm ho hopefully, I'm, I hope not to offend you uh, by uh, kind of uh, uh, getting shot, shots at your question here. Uh, CL is going higher uh, as one here, uh, Scott. Uh, there's a couple questions um, from uh, uh, someone here about the ES and the correlation. If you're taking a look at that as well. Yeah, actually, I actually missed a volume of any here in ES. So let's see if we uh, can still trade it. Hopefully I didn't miss this trade. I'm going to get rid of these zones that happened at the open. We've already traded up and down through them, ATR. So here's your, here's your most recent event. So again, I have a process, right? And I follow my process. It's not, oh, I feel like this is going to happen. I talk about it on my webinars all the time for my room. I always feel something, right? I'm like, yeah, this doesn't feel right. But I still follow my rules. Trust me, you, you, you're not going to, I've been trading for, you know, 24 years or whatever it is. So you, I have great intuition. Well, intuition with these algos doesn't work very well, right? So it's like I'm just following my plan 
and what you know what I expect. Again, where I'll change things is you know I say I get out at three quarters in ATR. If there's a zone right below there, then I move it below the zone, as you saw. But that's about it. Other than that, I don't mess with my system because I know I, it's an extreme edge. It's this the, this these volume setups in the lug. You're in the lugs. You're not going to find a, a more powerful edge in trading. Take it from me. I've done this for 24 years. I've never seen a more powerful edge, right? So I know if I follow my rules and don't make any stupid mistakes, which happens sometimes, you know, the room sees it, I do it occasionally, and then I berate myself for it. Um, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes, you know, we're, I'm human. So are you guys, right? You're going to make mistakes. But for the most part, I am, you know, clear, concise, know what I want to do, have my process, put the trades on. That's it. If they lose, on to the next one, on to the next one. You're not going to win every trade. Trading is is all st statistics, right? It's percentages. You keep putting them on, you're going to catch huge winners, like the NASDAQ, and like, you know, like the one I took overnight in the ES. All, it's just, you just got to keep putting them on. You can't be afraid of losses. If you think you're going to come in here and avoid losses, you're wrong. It's not going to happen. You take your loss, you control your risk. The way you control your risk is with the volume setups, you're out, on to the next one. That's it. That's what trading is, right? Um, all right. So let's. This was a thousand, close to a thousand nine eighty five buy ice. So what's the process? Volume of that. Go to the lugs. What's going on here? Well, so we didn't tag this. That was not good. If, you, if I got a volume, and then I would have shorted, and I would have got out of here, kind of like we did Nasdaq. It was real close. We held this. Now expectation is to come up here and tag this again. You should not see a bearish event. If I get a bearish event, I'm going to short it, but I need to see full ATR retest failure because we're above the yellow look. So then, so now I know what should happen. This should, you gotta give the benefit of the doubt we're gonna tag the red lug. You should not see a bearish event, right? So now what's ATR in here? Thir only 13 points, only 13 and a half points, huh? that's it. All right, so 13 points. So. This will be a bearish event if this goes 13 points. I just got stepped out on that um, crude pullback, so I stepped out on my trailing stop. Um, so this is almost 13 points. So if this goes 13 points, retest failure, I am going short. So the butt up. This zone was 144.175. We need to see 88.75. Actually, what did I say? 13. That's actually 14. So 87.75 for this to be a full ATR below here, which will be then a bearish event, which you should not see above the yellow log. Then I'll wait for a retest failure and I'll go short. If this holds here and gets back above here, three quarters in ATR, I'll go long because we didn't violate this zone with an ATR. So it's still potential Titanic setup. One of my five setups, actually we have six now. Um, it'll still be intact because we didn't make it a full ATR below there, right? So keep an eye on that. This is probably not very good for my MQ long. Came all the way back. I actually had a nice profit on that. I should I should have just got out. It was close enough to the zone. So this is what I'm talking about, intuition, right? Like things like this, where you're like, okay, red lugs right here. This is the prior zone. This is a couple ticks. As soon as you start to see red bubbles, I should have just been out of the trade. I don't need to try to milk out another 15 points like I did with the VWAP, right? So this one, I just cost myself 60 play. It could come back. But it's like there's no reason to mess around. This is where you can use your intuition and be like, you know what? That's good enough. Like this, right? This was red lug was right here. Baby lug was right there. Actually, that's not baby lug. That's VWAP. Uh, VWAP uh, standard deviation. But we had the zone right there. Like, I don't need to squeeze out 15 more points. Like, that's nothing in this market. Get out and then wait for your next setup. So that's where I kind of screwed up. But it's harder to, you know, jump in and out here when I'm on these webinars. But... If I was just sitting here by myself, I would have definitely got out right there and said, okay, that's that's good enough. I just caught a, you know, 70, 75 point trade. And I'm out or 70 point trade. But it may come back up. All right, ES. Again, it never got a full ATR below this zone. So this is still a potential. You see these white snakes here. There's nothing on the, the nothing on the SI, but it's just good to know. So this is still potentially a bullish setup because we didn't get a full ATR earlier. It's still a potential Titanic setup. Titanic is when the market 
runs in the by ice, so say on the long side, and it holds and moves higher. Right? Broken ice is if this goes a full ATR below here, that's broken ice. So paper's not always right. And you get that, you get that, you get into my room sometimes too. Well, this is a bullish event. This is by ice. Buy ice and sell ice are not by themselves bullish or bearish events. It depends on how we move out of there, right? Like we saw the other day, was it yesterday? All oh, the days are blending again because it's been so crazy, but there was tons of buy ice. Actually, it was, yeah, it was yesterday. It was after the Fed. Tons of buy ice right after the Fed, and they got smoked, right? So I know you're going well, you don't know what they were doing. They might have been hedging. They might, I don't care. It's the area that's important, and you're going to see it when you watch it enough. There's traders on both sides of the trade. When you see an area with a lot of volume, that's all you need. And then you make and you see how it moves out of there. ATR, three quarters in ATR. Use your Ludwig levels. Again, if you don't have these, she's got a three free day trial. Go to her website, ludwiglevels.com. It's from 1972. I've already made fun of her about that. She knows it. She's just been, you know, busy with all her customers. But um, say you saw it on Bookmap webinar and she'll have some kind of special discount as far as maybe give me an extra product or two because I think it's four products. If you remember my room, you get six products instead of four. You get grandfather pricing and all this other stuff. So, but anyway, go try it. You try it for free and you'll see how ridiculously powerful these things are with the volume set. Like it's again, I have never seen a stronger edge between using this, these, and the uh, volume setups. All right. Uh, Oh, did I flip this? I flipped this trade right it's below the yellow lug. I just came back. All right, so I got to get this stop in first and foremost. So I flipped it. We did get a move, and look where we bounced off of. Hey, the other, another volume setup. It's not a coincidence. Let's do it with my the ATR is 28. So basically 20 ticks above here, 21 ticks above here. So I will stop out of this short. <clears throat> 60. Remember, I flipped. I was long. I got out of my long, and now I'm short. So that I will get out three quarters of ATR. Why did I go get into that trade aggressively? Well, because we're still below the yellow up. Right? willing to give that sh a shot aggressively. If this in turns into a bullish setup, well then I'll turn around. If I could get full ATR retest fail, I'll go long. As long as we didn't get an ATR below here, which I think we did. This was at 37. Right, I'm probably get stopped out of this one, which is not cool. This was 37 down to 04. What did I say here was? It's 29, it's 30. So we didn't get, yeah, we did. Sorry. So this what? So I'm not going to go flip and go long here, right? Because this confirmed as a bearish event. So I'll step out, but I will not go just flip and go long because this got a full ATR below, zone, which makes it bearish only. It can't be bearish and bullish the way I trade these if it goes a full ATR. So then I'll just wait for a new setup. And again, this could be a loser. It's fine. On to the next Soy trade. On to the next trade. Soybean ice for sells. Yes. 275 contracts. On to the next trade. On to the so next market. Iceberg sells ES. Could be Iceberg sells ES. 202 contracts. Trust me, you think that stuttering is annoying? I get times where it's part, it has something to do with my computer too, but it'll, it'll say it like 15 times in a row. It's not, it's not fun. All right, this is big ice and soybeans. So what do we do? This is our third market we're trading. Actually, possibly fourth if we could fill it on gold. This is why you want to watch multiple markets. I mean, some people don't have the bandwidth. I can watch multiple markets, but you want at least two or three. So if your market sucks that day, you're not forcing trade. Just move on to another market, especially when you have this indicator. The most powerful indicator in the history of trading. Did I ever mention that before? Let's get this drawn. This is step one, right? There's your zone right there. Great thing about grains is the zones are pretty tight. This is like a point, point point and a half with 426 cell ice in here. All right, next step. Let's get our thesis and the lugs. What's going on with the lugs? What do you see here? Built new lugs, failed to hold yellow, red. You expect blue. 
that didn't happen. Again, we don't know. I don't think this is the middle of the night. I don't know when it was. It doesn't matter when it was. Things change, right? You're ready to flip if things don't happen. And this was this morning. Uh, yeah, this was the middle of the night. So then what happened? <clears throat> well, we got above here, held yellow, held yellow, try to get below, try to get below. Now we're above. Volume event. I will get long aggressively. That's my target. If this turns into, you should not see a bearish event. If I do, then I'll wait for full ATR retest failure. That'll be my target. That'll be my target. All based on volume and the lugs. Right? So then you go to your five minute. ATR is 3.10. 3.1 times 0.75. 2.32. So we'll say two and a half. Two and a half points above here. I will go long aggressively because, and actually I could put it on full size, because. We are above the yellow look. So 50 and a quarter, two and a half points is 52.75. So I will go along there. Red lug's at 58. I'll get out of some there, I'll get up there, and then my stop's going to go two and a half points below here. I'm basically risking 10 cents. I know it's 10 cents to basically make six or seven, but, I, you know, Sometimes if it's real close to the lug, I just won't put on the tray like in the room. If it's right on top of the lug, I'm not going to put it on the lug. I'll just wait for it to build new lugs and wait for another setup. But I will take this. Uh, we'll take this trade. Right, what's going on here? All right, crude held the zone. Now you know. So many times you'll see this, like your ranges you see on your bar charts. Well, a lot of times it's just bouncing in between zones, which you just saw right there. Boom, boom, boom. Get this out of here. None. Really wish I would have got out of this NASDAQ and I just had another chance again. Missed this because I was on another market. Again, I don't need to squeeze out another 15 points. I would have been out of there twice. No, hopefully I don't get stopped out, but that's a possibility. Still a good day in NASDAQ, but I, don't, I want more. I don't like making mistakes where I should have been out of the trade and then watching the thing go back 100 points. That's not cool. All right, so what do you see here? What did we just talk about? This is the volume of that. <clears throat> this is a yes. That is a full ATR. This is now a bearish setup. This is broken ice. You had buy ice come in, try to hold the market up. No, we're above the yellow lug. So I will now, I, I won't get in, I wouldn't get short aggressively. I'm waiting for an ATR retest failure, then I'll go short. Because you should not see a bearish setup above the yellow lug. If you do, something's wrong. And this is going to be the second time. Just remember this going into this afternoon when I get off this webinar. No dice, no dice, bearish setup. We get below here. This is where we're going. Baby lug in this. That's what you should expect if this, if we do this and this, I will fully expect to move to the blue lug with a double. A double chance to tag red, no no dice, no dice, held inside the VWAP, one standard deviation, fully expecting to move down to 32. Do you think that's crazy? Watch. Watch by the end of the day. So what will I do? I'll go short. Well, then then what? Do I just close my eyes and hope? Well, yeah, if nothing happens. Stop, stop, guys, yes. 200 to contracts. I didn't get filled in there. I'll come back to that. Yeah, if, if nothing happens, if nothing happens here, then yeah, I'll just sit here and hold it. If I get a volume event that's bullish, I'll get out of the trade, right? Other than that, you hold the trade. And you will be amazed how, like, they were talking the other day in the room, like, wow, NQ lug was so far away, I thought there was no chance. And it, like, went there in, like, 10 minutes. It's, it's, it's things are ridiculous. As far as also, like, your target where you're not, you know, most traders put on a trade and they've got 55 things on their chart. Bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish. So when they finally can't pull the trigger, then they're like, oh, maybe I should get out. This is this looks like a, this. I don't want to be short here. This is a bullish indicator, blah, blah, blah. When you're just using your volume and these and nothing happens, you're like, fine, bring it. I think we're getting, we're going to go here. Here, here, right? You can get out of a couple there or there. And then you just sit and let the trade work unless you see an opposing volume setup and then you get out and flip potentially. <clears throat>
And I would love to see this pop back up here. I'll get out. And then that would be a retest of this zone. And then I'll go short if it retest fails. That would be just fabulous. All right, soybeans. Another event. 200 buy stops and more sell ice. So this is a delayed dumb and or a late delayed double whammy. What's a double whammy? It's a dumb money retail puke. We're all dumb money if we're not at a firm, right? We're not. We don't have them. We don't have the funds to be smart to make ourselves smart because that's what they do. They push the market around because they can. They make themselves smart. So you had the puke. He actually had sell ice before that. That's what we drew the zone on. But then you had a puke. This is a little delayed. And then there was more sell ice in here. So again, now this goes ATR. We test fail. I will go short because we're above the yellow. Look, I'm not going to be aggressive out here like I was to the long side this trade. Things change, right? Any questions, Bruce? This is 40, say 49. You said two and a half points as a full ATR. Is that right? I'm sorry, three, three, three point one four. So three and a quarter points. I need to see on the drawer. I need to see three and a quarter points out of here. So 46. 3575, right? We said 49. 4575, retest, fail, three quarters in ATR. I will go short, stop will go three quarters in ATR above there. And then I'll play that way. Again, we just went over why this was, should be bullish. You shouldn't see a bearish event, right? Things change. Yeah, we were expecting this, but if that doesn't happen, now you get a bearish event, now you get short. You're expecting that as target, that as target but I need to see full ATR retest for it to be the bearish event for me. At least full ATR would be a bearish event, but for me to get short, I need to see full ATR retest failure. All right, Bruce, we're starting to run out of gas. What, uh, any, any other questions? Uh, no, I think I've kind of caught up with the questions though, but uh, this has really been an, a, a uh, uh, an excellent webinar, Scott. I mean, uh, one of the kind of distinctions between you and, and others out there is just exactly what this webinar is showing, uh, your ability to uh, uh, execute uh, so quickly in um, kind of volatile markets like this. Um, uh, fantastic uh, stuff. So I, I'm going to put this into the selected webinars on our YouTube channel uh, so uh, uh, others can see it as well. But uh, I think we're caught up on the questions. Um, and yeah, nothing. Stop, nothing stop, else. sell, yes. He stops, stop, sell, yes. If I stop, stop, sell, yes. 500 Ford, sell, yes. 500 Ford, sell, yes. 500 Ford, he compress. That's the issue I'm having with this computer. So, first and foremost, I got the damn landscapers outside my house. Perfect timing. So, that's that noise. Because again, trading's not hard enough without distractions. So you see, this is threshold. TC stops TC, 394 contracts. Of course, everything's going to fire up. Just, every time, Bruce, just, every time I mutter, I'm getting off the webinar, you know this has happened for a year straight, every yeah, time. pretty much. So we're short here. So what can we do? Hold on a second. That's my gold chart, Chris. Go, go throw oh, something at the gardeners there. you got to be kidding me, man. Seriously. It's like it's not hard enough to concentrate, and i got to listen to that nonsense. All right, so you have this. Wow. Setting. Okay, so what's the worst I can do? Trail the stop. Gosh, God. Hold on a second. Oh boy, those those uh, landscapers are going to be getting just chewed out right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, David. And logical, yeah. I'm glad he muted.
Yeah, exactly. If you didn't mute, we couldn't post this video. I'd have to edit it out. All right, guys. That was the, I thought it was our landscapers as the neighbors, so I can't tell them to get out of here. <laughs> So if it goes off again, apologies. So what I was saying is I can I can trail my stop now. Everything's firing off right here right at the moment. So 24.3 is the ATR. 24.3 times 0.75 is 18 ticks, 18.2. So we'll say 19 ticks above here is where I'll step out of this. You gotta be kidding me. I'm starting to lose my cool. Double leaf blowers. That's what I have outside my window. Two, not just one, two. All basically standing next to each other. All right, so I'm trailing this short here. I will add to this short, and you see this liquidity blow here too. That's just added bonus because you know we're going there because that's paper, and paper gets what they want because they make themselves get what they want because they push the market around. So once again, oh, here's a blue lug. Remember I said I would, uh, hold on a second. So what I'm going to do here just gonna get out of these right now. Wrap blue lug. So this is what I was just talking about, right? I don't put on positions <clears throat> on top of the lug. So what I will do, I got out of the, the original setup was up here, right? Now we just got a new setup. So what's gonna happen here? I'll just get out. Yes, this one's in the middle of the zone, but we just bounce off the blue lug. If this one ends up going the full ATR, or even three quarters in ATR, it's very likely will be, it'll draw new lugs and then I can go short. So what I'll do here is because at the yellow lug, I wait for retest failures. So I will wait for a full ATR or retest a failure and then I will go short this latest setup. So this doesn't happen a ton, but in this situation, it just happened that you get a setup right on top of the lug. I'm not gonna stay short on the lug because I know how powerful the lugs are. If this comes back down below that setup, then we're very likely to draw new lugs, especially for some reason this thing's drawing lugs everywhere today. Um, then I'm gonna turn around, wait for a full ATR, retest of that zone, failure, and then look for the next lugs, yellow, red, or blue, sorry, not red. All right, so I'm out of that trade, tiny, tiny winner, but it is what it is. Um, what do we miss here? I still think I stopped at an ASIC. What, what's going on here today? I've avoided two stop outs so far. So again, I just cost myself because I wasn't on top of what was going on up here. This is a hundred points because I didn't get out close to the zone, close to the red lug. hundred points. And I'm probably gonna get stopped out of this. It's gonna be a hundred and fifty dollar, hundred and fifty point mistake. That doesn't feel very good, but all right, so what did I miss here in the S? Yeah, but even though you're oh, still yeah. like <laughs> way up on the trade. Yeah, but I still don't like I don't like that because again I I will get out I don't need to see an extra 10 15 points in Nasdaq I, I'll get out and just wait. Yeah, yeah. Wait no, no I mean uh, you, you, yeah exactly and and these are the points you make in these webinars like learn from these like mistakes you know. Right, right, exactly. I mean again it's hard for me on these webinars because I'm on one screen I can only see one market while I'm doing stuff and I just I just miss things. Yeah, I mean, Scott, if you don't want to take questions during these and, and maybe like Q and A later, uh, that's fine. Uh, this is, I mean, this is just very rare to get insight like this uh, from a, a professional trader like like you uh, on on their executing like this. Uh, so, right. uh, yeah, just uh, you know, go go with it. Oh, it's fine. It does. It's not the questions. It's just me being on one screen is the hardest part. I see. Okay. Then I miss stuff, and it is what it is. So. Um, all right, so we'll get this drawn. This was the stop running. Yes, I was really hoping for a retest of that first zone because I wanted to go short. Remember I said you shouldn't see a bearish event and you saw a bearish event. I was not aggressive out of that zone because we we're still above yellow luck, right? I was really, really, really hoping we would get back up here to retest this zone and it didn't happen, right? I was waiting for this and I was gonna go short. Never got there, new setup. Did this get an ATR below here? Let's see. And ATR is still 13 and a half points. Bottom of the zone was 80, 84. Got down to 70, 76. So no, that was only eight points. 
So this still can be construed as a, as a bearish or a bullish setup, right? This still can be a dumb and dumber, dumb money puke, hold, go the other way because we never got the full ATR below there. Um, let's look at our lugs, see how we're going to play this. I have to yell love, right? So I will continue. I will still go along here. I know this didn't happen and this didn't happen, but you shouldn't see a bullish setup then, right? You should see this break. Again, it's not a bullish setup yet. So we'll see what happens here, but I will go along aggressively because we're still above the yellow lug. So again, 13.5 times 0.75 is 10 points, 10.12. So 10 and a quarter points out of here. Eighty-seven, ninety-seven. I'll go along right there. That's three quarters. An ATR aggressive entry off of this zone because we're above the, the yellow lug. If we happen to get below here, full ATR, then I'll wait for a retest failure. Then I'll go short. Then we'll be below the yellow lug. And I still think we're going to go. To, I don't really want to go long here. I mean, I'm playing again. Like I told you, it doesn't matter what I want or what I feel. I feel like this thing's going to sell off hard. But I'm, you see how I will still go long based on my my setups. Right, but like we talked about, this couldn't get this couldn't get there. Again, things can change. This could be a bullish setup, and we can make another attempt. You've got to give the benefit of the doubt that we will finally tag the red. But if we get below here, and that'll be right below that setup, then I then I'm still expecting this by the end of the day. So we'll see. If this holds and we go higher, then I'm then we're probably gonna go up and tag the red. You just got to be ready to you know ready to flip your thesis, and it's all driven by what the volume is telling you, right? That's the thing. It's like if you're trading just the lugs by themselves, so many times you'll get chopped up, right? Because you're like, well, like, you know, say you get short up here because it didn't tag. Say you got short up here because it didn't tag. Well, then it turns around and stops you up. And then you're like, okay, it didn't tag again. I'm going to go short. You would have caught this to the yellow, but then you're like, oh, it's below the yellow. I'm going to get short here. Wrong, right? So it's like, that's why this is one piece, very, very powerful piece, but the volume is end all be all. The book map SI indicator volume is end all be all, period. That's it. So let's see if we can fill here. <clears throat> um, so let's see if I get filled and I'll probably up off this. I'm getting a headache, especially listening to leaf blowers in my, I was gonna say back swing. Leaf floors in my backswing. You know, I have golf on the brain. Um, let's see here. Let's see what's going on in here. So again, this was 3.1. Did we get three points below here? No, we did not. Remember, 49. We needed to see 46.75. I'm sorry, 45.75. That never happened. Now I'm long. I got filled on this long. This is because this is still a bullish setup. We never got the full ATR below here. I got it in three quarters ATR. Now my stop's going to go a full ATR below there at the 45.25. Right, that's that. One second. All right, so we're along that, and why were we long aggressively? Hey, how many leaves could you blow in one area? That's all I want to know. This guy's been standing in the same spot for 15 minutes. I'm starting to lose my cool, Bruce. Go hit him, Scott. <laughs> I'll throw something at him. So again, we're what's the expectation? Well, minimum this, right? We already talked about this earlier. Couldn't get to the blue, got above the yellow. And many times you'll see the choppiness around the yellow. That's why I always wait for retest fails on setups around the yellow because you'll get this a lot. And then it cleared it. Expectations here and higher if we can rip through there. So if we get up to 58, I'll get out of a couple of these. Probably I'll get out of at least half. And if it struggles, I'll get a, uh, like if it gets up to 58 and I start to see red, big red bubbles, I'm out. I'll just get out of all of it and I'll wait for a new setup. And once we build new lugs, right? All right, so along that, uh, we got out of we got out of gold. Looks like that was correct. 
Yeah. So again, we want to see this bust below here, build new lugs, and then I'll then I will go short again. And then we are long now ES. So what do I do? And and never got stopped out of NASDAQ. Miracle. I'm not kidding. Whoever's on this webinar, I would not leave your houses today because you have witnessed two different moves in the NASDAQ that I did not get stopped out to the tick. Do not leave your house. That's all I'm telling you. Don't press your luck. <coughs> um, that was a joke, by the way. Here, I can't even get a chuckle from Bruce. All right, so what, what happened here? So I was waiting for a retest of this zone to short it, but a new event happened, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get out of it's too close. I'll just hold on to this. What I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to get out of this NASDAQ now. I'm not pressing my luck because now I'm long. Uh, now I'm long. Uh, well, they, they gave us a little Black Mamba to play off of, too. How, how convenient. How nice of them. So what I'm going to do here, if this gets below this Black Mamba, I like, we'll give it 10 points. See this Black Mamba here? 262 swipes. If this gets back down to 1250, I'll just get out of this trade. Because I'm already long NASDAQ, I don't need to see this come all the way back again at 150 points. Again, we're close enough to the log, close enough to this volume setup from before. I'll just get out of this and then I'll play my, uh, I'll hold my ES. What's that? Probably about to get stopped out of there. So finally, how am I playing this? 13 and a half points. So we said 10, 10 points, 10 and a quarter points is a three quarters in ATR. So 10 and a quarter points. I probably have, no, I only have two on. That's good. So 10 and a quarter points below this zone, I will stop out of this trade. So that's 74, 73 quarter, or 73 three quarters. And I understand this is big risk trade. Well, that's why I only have two on, right? Because if this turns out to be correct, this thing can easily go 50, 100 points. You've seen it multiple times in the last few days, right? So I'm fine with risking 30 points on a trade, 25 points on a trade. And then that's when you do this, right? You come here. Again, this is in my room. You should have it. They have variations on the internet. You can find them. If not, come to my room. You can get it. So if I'm risking, I, should, I have too many on here, right? So actually, this is 1.5. Let's change this to 2. 2% risk. If I'm risking 25 points in the net and the ES, yeah, I can have two on. So that was a good guess. 22, risking 25, I can put two two contracts there. Again, I'm not going on a rant today on this. If you're not using something like this, you're over trading your account and you're going to blow out your account, especially in markets like this. So, all right. So I stopped out of Nasdaq. Good day in there so far. Um, and then long this as long as this holds. My expectations red lug. For some reason, this gets back below here, so I won't. I will not short this zone now because we got a full ATR above here, right? So this setup is done for a potential short. But if this fails and I get stopped out, we get below the yellow lug and I get a signal. Remember, like I said, I, I still feel I feel like we're going to sell off today, but I still took the long, right? Because that's my process. But if we get below that, so if I get stopped out of here. So once again. You should, this or the volume setups here, this should go tag this. If this this happens and I get stopped out of that trade, which will be right below the yellow, I'm looking for a short setup, and this is where we're headed. I feel like that's what's going to happen today. But again, I, will, I still went long, right, because my setups told me to go long. But if this fails, get ready, because we will be testing this blue lug today, if not lower. So. All right, Bruce, any other questions? If not, I'm going to hop off. <clears throat> no, no, I think you've gotten through everything. And uh, this was uh, really a uh, great, great webinar, Scott. Thank you. Uh, just to get some insight to, you know, uh, you in the heat, heat of the battle here. Uh, and just, um, uh, you know, uh, very concisely and, and uh, 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 you know, quickly, uh, swiftly executing. Uh, and um, wow, you know, uh, <laughs> that's all I can say. So we're going to put this onto the uh, uh, YouTube channel under the selected webinars, as well as it'll be under the streaming. It'll be in both areas. Uh, so if you guys want to review, uh, maybe over the weekend or whatnot. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you, Scott. Uh, great stuff. I mean, it's so simple, too. That's what I love about it. 
uh, levels easy. and and simple and easy. Uh, yeah, levels and and volume around in or order flow events around your your levels. That's it. Right. Exactly. You know, if you guys use something else for your levels, as long as you don't have forty five things on your chart, you can do the same thing with the lugs that I do with the lugs. But I'm telling you right now, again, I don't just I don't incorporate things in my trading um, haphazardly. Like it took me a long time. Watching that, I saw one of the guys in the room, and went my room made like a million and a half bucks. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll start looking at them. And then I looked at them, I'm like, oh my God, these things are incredible. So again, I don't just throw things on my chart and, and show you guys without thorough research. And I'm telling you, the lugs with the, with these with this with the volume, you're not going to get a better edge, in my opinion. So, um, but hopefully, you guys learned. Uh, that's the whole point of these. And you see, even you know, even though I feel a certain way, I'm still putting on my trades. You're going to get stopped out onto the next trade, onto the next trade, and then you're going to catch the whopper, right? That's what trading is. All right. Um, so going, you know, again, I'm long ES. I'm still long beans. I'm watching this 58. That's the red lug. I'll get out of most of these, if not all, if we tag it, and then I'll see if we can draw new lugs up there. And if we do, most likely there'll be a brand new volume event, and I'll turn around and get long again. But I don't, I'm not just going to hope we build new lugs. Like if this gets up here and it struggles at all, I'll get out and then I'll wait for a new, new lugs to be built and I'll go along again on a new setup. All right, guys. Um, that's it. Yeah, thanks, Scott. And uh, uh, guys, look for the webinar soon. I'll have it up there for you in a few hours. Uh, but uh, uh, thank you so much, Scott. Really, really great insight. A peek, peek under the, the curtain here to see what's uh, really kind of uh, uh, the mindset of a... Of a uh, 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 seasoned veteran here definitely seasoned <laughs> <laughs> definitely seasoned definitely veteran i'm also a, a senior, i'm almost also a senior citizen i turned 50 in a month i'm already getting like aarp things it's that's pretty depressing Ooh, yeah I'm, yeah that hurts yeah, that's not good, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll see you guys next thursday thanks scott thanks